Hey guys, and welcome back to Walker's Workshop. You know, it's been unusually cold this winter, and uh, that can deter a lot of people from getting out and about and uh, doing their projects that they want to get done. You know, whether it's outside or in their shop. Um, so today I'm going to show you how I keep my shop nice and toasty warm. Okay guys, uh, first thing I want to point out is a waste oil burner isn't for everybody. Um, if you don't have a good steady supply of oil, um, maybe a, a wood stove or a coal stove might be something that works better for you. Um, even propane heat works well, uh, pretty efficient. Um, but I had the problem where I was always having engine oil left over. Um, I had to get rid of it, didn't know what to do with it all. And um, I thought, you know, I can use this. I can figure something out to do with this engine oil. So I thought, perfect, I'm going to use it for heat. And if it might be something that works for you, I'll show you how I did it. You guys can make a decision if it's right for you. So the first thing I wanted to figure out uh, when building my waste oil furnace was what what was I going to use to burn it in? You know, could I come up with, you know, maybe a barrel type of stove? Or I've seen guys use propane bottles, the big 100-pound bottles. Um, I personally used a grease barrel for my first one. It was a 35-gallon uh, barrel. Um, it worked well, but at the same time, it just wasn't very safe, I felt, because it got so hot. It was literally glowing red when I had a nice fire going in there, and I really didn't like that. Um, so what I came up with was ended up finding a coal and wood stove, um, that I was able to convert. And yes, I wanted it to be able to go back to coal or wood just in case I run out of oil, my supply dries up. Um, I can split some firewood, light her up, keep my shop warm. Uh, or coal. I can go to the coal yard, shovel a couple of buckets. I'm good to go. Um, so one thing you definitely want is to be... You definitely want a nice thick material. Barrels are really thin. You can line them with fire brick. I've seen guys do that before. Um, that may be a good option. I chose the wooden coal stove because of the thick 3 8 inch metal that it was made with. It was already lined with fire bricks and it had multi-use. So the next thing I needed to figure out was how am I going to get oil into this thing? And of course, the most popular thing to do is going to be just a simple gravity feed. So, okay, that's not too hard. I can figure this one out. Let's see. What I ended up doing is building a shelf way up high here. Right, so I took a five-gallon bucket, put a small hose. This is a clear tube here. It's black now because it's filled with oil. When the oil comes down, I can see exactly how much is left. Super easy gauge to see. It just gravity feeds down through the hose, over here, right into the stove, comes over to this gate valve. Gate valve is really nice for metering how much oil needs to flow through. Whether it, you know, I need a drip, drip, or if I need a small stream coming down through, or maybe I need a big fat wide open, you know, I'm getting it started, I need a lot of heat. So that was pretty simple. Once it comes down through the valve, through the cross, it runs into this 3 8 inch copper pipe. All right, so the copper pipe comes down here into my cast iron pipe. I just drilled a small hole uh, in this 90 degree elbow, simply slid the copper pipe in through there. I welded this plate onto the side of the stove, so if I want to change it out, I undo those four bolts, take my flat block off plate, bolt it on there, throw wood in it, use it for whatever. So, the copper tube comes in here, has a 90 degree bend, 
runs straight down in and it stops about an inch up from the bottom of the air pipe. So in this section here where the fire is, it's super hot. Um, in order to prevent hot spots between the copper tube and the metal pipe, I ended up just wrapping a welding rod around inside the pipe, spiraling it around the copper and then tack welding it fast so it stayed. You can also use, uh, if you don't have welding rods, you can use um, something like a spring from the hardware store, something that has a 3 8 inside diameter, slide it up in there, tack weld it fast. Um, you could even pin it fast if you didn't have a welder. Um, no big deal. Works perfectly. Spirals the air, prevents the copper pipe from having hot spots and uh, melting to the side of the iron pipe. So that's how the oil runs. The next most important thing is air. I've seen guys build them with hair dryers and that probably worked really well. You can regulate the speed real easy. Um, I'm afraid they wouldn't last very long. I don't know that. I have no science to back that up. But just so happens, turned out, I keep all my junk. My wife yells at me all the time. I got so much junk. Why do I keep that stupid garbage? Well, for situations like this. So we had a blow up decoration, a pumpkin in the front yard. It ripped a hole in it. Um, I thought I can use that blower for something someday. So I cut it all apart and I took the blower out, threw it on a shelf. And wouldn't you know, one day I figured, yep, here it is. So <laughs> it's just a simple blower on a stand. Um, yep, that's duct tape or actually duct tape, uh, metal tape for duct work runs through the tube here right up into this valve I can regulate how much air comes in and out again it runs right up through this cast iron pipe around the copper and of course I already showed you how it works in the burn tube so well I mean it can't just go in there and make fire so I had this six inch piece of pipe laying around I cut welded a bottom into it it goes in here like so right underneath the oil drips down in there the air blows into it and it burns burns really well actually for our two minute geek peek of our project today um, some technical info about our our heater we built um, first off uh, we're using engine oil as the fuel for our fire um, our first point I want to point out um, water. Everybody knows oil and water does not go together. Um, the reason why we don't want any oil in our waste oil that we use um, is because on the molecular level water is hydrogen with two oxygen part particles. So that's H and two O's. So well what does that mean? I don't really understand H2O. Why is H2O bad? Basically, you have a fire going in there. The oxygen is going to get burned up, which is going to make a bigger flame because the more air you put into it, the bigger flame you get. Um, with that bigger flame, right? So the oxygen is now burned. It's gone. What you have left is this hydrogen particle. Um, the hydrogen is a very flammable, uh, very explosive gas. So what you end up with is the fire popping as it's burning this explosive hydrogen. And um, that can be dangerous. You know, you could get it to where it's, it's popping and it's maybe it's coming out the door or going out the chimney, causing a chimney fire, multiple things. You really, really, really don't want any water in your oil when used in a waste oil furnace. Second thing that really um, affects the burning process um, is the viscosity of the oil. And of course, all of 
I shouldn't say all. Most of the oils we're using nowadays is multi-viscosity. So when it's cold, it's thicker. You know, your 10W30s or 520s, doesn't matter. 1540s, it's going to be thicker when it's cold. So you come out to your garage, it's freezing cold, you open the oil spout up, and it's just barely dripping because it's so thick. So the amount of oil you're going to put in there when the temperature is cold is going to be different of uh, the amount of oil that you're putting in once everything's warmed up um, the third point um, about how your heater is going to burn has to do with the air we're putting into it right so our air density and the reason that it is different is air has all these little you know molecules in it when it's cold the air is dense it's really squoze together you can see all these little molecules in this cold air. So the amount of fuel you're putting in here um, is going to burn this large amount of oxygen. So you're going to have a different flame. Once the air in your shop gets warm, um, the air is less dense. It has expanded. Your particles are going to be much farther apart. You're going to have less oxygen once it's warmed up. Um, so the colder air normally will create a hotter uh, larger flame because there's more oxygen particles in it and once it heats up you're going to need more air to get the same amount of oxygen particles in it so that's our geek peek for today if you have any questions let me know don't forget to like subscribe and follow along with us on all of our adventures we get into okay guys now it's time to light this thing up let's see how easy it is i simply use a little cup I use off-road diesel um, you can use regular diesel uh, kerosene anything that lights you know not gas because that would be bad but uh, anything with a nice slow burning flame I just simply take that pour it into the pot um, MAF gas torch you can use propane if you want there's no need for like an oxyacetylene torch or anything like that um, once you got your diesel fuel in there, light it up. Nice small flame. Close her up and turn the air on. Uh, once you've got the air turned on, you can simply open up the oil. You can see a nice steady stream coming down through there. So I have the uh, oil in there burn or the, the fuel in there burning now. Nice small flame. The oil will start running in and I can regulate the temperature uh, of the stove by how much oil, how much air. Um, if I find it's getting real smoky, I'll cut the oil back a little bit, leave the air coming in, you know. Um, and it's that simple. Uh, I can burn on a five gallon bucket anywhere between like five and 15 hours uh, depending on the outside temperature uh, how warm I want the garage um, I also like it uh, if you're doing any kind of paintwork or clean with carburetors with gas or anything flammable you just turn the oil off like two minutes fires out do what you need to do once you feel it's ventilated enough in your shop lighter back up literally took less than two minutes to start that fire so if you guys want any more details let me know uh, don't forget to like follow subscribe you know share with anybody that you might think be interested in one of these um, I will catch you on the next one